Signs, the Holy Spirit is talking to you through dreams and vision. Dreams and visions have been known to be one of the significant ways God uses to pass across his speakings to his people. Maybe you have woken up from a dream and you too have had that feeling like it held a message meant just for you. Maybe it left a mark, nudging you to consider it again and again. Or perhaps you have had a vision, vivid and unmistakable, carrying a sense of urgency, or that brought with it a calm and reassurance, as though God himself had whispered something into your spirit. The people from ancient prophets to the apostles of the New Testament, we see the Spirit communicating in this way to them, guiding, warning, encouraging, and offering prophetic insights. And it wasn't just limited to God's covenant people. We see even kings like Pharaoh, Nebuchadnezzar, the Midianite man, telling his dream about Gideon, Pilate's wife, Cornelius, and many more have had dreams or visions from God to warn them. It is one of the mysterious but beautiful ways God connects with us all, reaching beyond our waking thoughts to speak directly to our hearts. Throughout history, people have known that dreams and visions can contain messages from God. Stories from the Old Testament reveal the Holy Spirit's influence in the dreams and visions given to people like Joseph, who dreamt of his future, or Daniel, whose visions unlocked mysteries for nations. In the New Testament, apostles like Paul, Peter, and John encountered guidance and divine revelation through these supernatural experiences, showing that God's Spirit was active and present, speaking to his people in unforgettable ways. Cases like Paul's dream from which he knew about going to Macedonia, Peter's vision about preaching to Gentiles, John's revelatory visions on the island of Patmos. But here's where things get interesting. Is it only the Holy Spirit who can access us in our dreams? Could something else influence what we see and feel? And if so, how do we recognize the Holy Spirit's voice above all others? These are deep questions, and they invite us into a journey of spiritual discernment. Together, let's explore how we can recognize when the Holy Spirit is talking to us through dreams and visions, how to lean in with a heart ready to receive, test, and understand His voice in the depths of our soul. Sources of dreams and visions and their defining characteristic. First, let us start with defining the three sources of dreams that the Bible provides. I would also give a few characteristics that could show what type of dreams each are. Ultimately, the Holy Spirit offers the best wisdom and insight on dreams, so you must always turn to listen to Him. A warning, though. Do not be conceited and overwhelmed to ignore the voice of wisdom. Let's begin. In the Bible, dreams and visions can originate from three main sources. God, through the Holy Spirit, the human mind, and demonic influences. Here's a look at each source with scriptural examples to help understand how to discern the origins of these dreams and visions. 1. Dreams and visions from God through the Holy Spirit. The Bible has numerous examples of God communicating through dreams and visions to guide, warn, instruct, or reveal His plans, which are usually the purposes of dreams and visions. When God is the source, the dream or vision often carries his peace, but doesn't mean it will always carry a positive or pleasant feeling. There are examples of dreams from God that brought distress at the present moment, but ultimately God will lead you to the answer that gives or brings the peace and produces faith if it didn't come initially. When God is the source, the dream or vision often carries wisdom and aligns with his word, providing spiritual insight, direction, and encouragement. God gave Joseph dreams that foretold his future position of leadership and how his family would bow to him in Genesis 37, 5-11. Though they caused tension, these dreams came to pass, and God used Joseph's position to save many people. In Acts 10, 9-16, Peter received a vision of a sheet filled with animals where God instructed him to eat. This vision symbolized God's invitation for Peter to preach to the Gentiles, demonstrating that God's salvation was for all people. Characteristics God-inspired dreams are often consistent with His Word and would usually contain a call to action like Peter's Damascus vision, repentance, encouragement, or reveal future events. The call to action, repentance, encouragement, or revelation 
may or may not immediately be clear to you, but usually in the place of prayer it will always come out clear. They can include feelings of peace, but not limited to it. They include awe and clarity about God's will, pointing us closer to Him. I will explain clearly the major signs, but let me just say it here. Worrying is not the purpose of God-given dreams. Rather, He always wants us to take an action, to plan for something to come. Then for you to pray ahead and pray that the action He has inspired you to take meets the necessary requirements because it will definitely come to pass. This is very important. 2. Dreams and visions from the human mind. Dreams and visions can also stem from our own minds. The Bible notes that some dreams result from daily thoughts, worries, or desires. When this happens, dreams may reflect our own emotions, stress, or experiences rather than a divine message. These dreams are often vague, inconclusive, or lack spiritual substance. For example, we have what the Bible calls the dreams of vanity in Ecclesiastes 5.3, for a dream cometh through the multitude of business. This verse suggests that many dreams come from the mind's processing of daily activities and thoughts rather than from God. Also, in Jeremiah 23:25 through 32, God rebuked false prophets who claimed to receive visions, but they were speaking their own dreams and imaginations rather than words from God. Characteristics. These dreams often have little spiritual significance and may mirror our daily concerns, anxieties, or desires. Sometimes you will know it's from your mind because the dream will mirror exactly the fears in your mind or the desires of your heart. It will mirror it exactly and not hide anything in mystery or symbols. Real dreams and visions are often shrouded in a lot mystery or symbols. A keep a personal rule to disregard specifically dreams I have immediately after a desire or a concern in my day. Human-inspired dreams are not particularly vivid or insightful and tend not to inspire spiritual action or growth. It will show you want you want, but never how to get there. Be very careful of these types and be very sincere to yourself about your actual desires and fears. Commit all your cares until God, much thinking doesn't help. 3. Dreams and visions from demonic influence. The Bible also warns that dreams and visions can originate from deceptive or demonic sources. These dreams may lead people away from God, confuse, frighten, or deceive them into false beliefs or practices. The enemy can attempt to imitate God's voice to lead people astray, though these dreams often produce fear, unrest, and doubt. In Deuteronomy 13, 1 through 3, God warns Israel about prophets or dreamers who might encourage them to follow other gods. Even if the signs appear to come true, they are a test to see if the people will stay faithful to God. False dreams, though potentially compelling, are intended to mislead. Characteristics Demonic dreams often end in situations where the enemy or evil is always victorious. It will show the dreamer as always defeated and with no one hope or having no one to save you. This contradicts God's truth, which clearly tells us that God is always willing to help or rescue us and that through Him we are more than conquerors. They will contain elements that subtly encourage sin of any kind, falsehood, or lead one away from a relationship with God. Demonic dreams will often cause the dreamer to develop hatred, doubt, or envy about another person trying to lead us away from God's love and righteousness. However, God can also reveal the presence or intentions of evildoers through dreams. But there's a distinct difference. When God reveals the motives or actions of someone with harmful intentions, it often comes with a sense of warning or discernment, not with bitterness or resentment. For example, in the Bible, God warned Joseph in a dream about Herod's intention to kill Jesus, Matthew 2.13. This revelation didn't instill hatred toward Herod, but rather directed Joseph to protect his family by relocating to Egypt. God's purpose in revealing the truth about someone's intentions is always constructive, often giving us the wisdom to act safely, pray effectively, or prepare for what's ahead. On the other hand, a demonic influence seeks to incite negative feelings, hoping to trap the dreamer in thoughts of judgment, anger, or mistrust that don't reflect God's love or purpose. In these cases, the dream's intent may feel unholy, lacking the peace and clarity God provides. 
As Ephesians 6.12 reminds us, our struggle is not against people themselves, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness. This verse helps us recognize the nature of the battle and discourages personal resentment, even when we must confront evil. Signs. The Holy Spirit is talking to you through dreams and vision. 1. The message brings peace, not confusion. One of the clearest signs of the Holy Spirit's voice in dreams is a sense of peace and clarity that follows, even if not immediately. The tendency to have an emotional reaction to the dreams and visions from the Holy Spirit is always there, and this includes even negative or unpleasant reactions or emotions. But then, as you meditate on the dream or vision and pray, a sense of calm will overwhelm you. You might even notice a detail you missed out on because of the fear of the dream, and faith will rise up again in your heart so you can heed to the warning or take necessary steps. God is not the author of confusion but of peace. 1 Corinthians 14.33 In a dream from the Holy Spirit, even if it holds a warning or a call to repentance, the underlying tone is gentle and will always invite us to either align with God's will or humble ourselves before Him, rather than instilling fear or confusion. If the dream or vision comes with symbols, you can always use the Bible to find parallel representations. For example, Joseph, who was betrothed to Mary, and received a dream in which an angel told him to take Mary as his wife, for her child was conceived by the Holy Spirit. While the situation itself was confusing, the message brought peace, reassuring Joseph that this was part of God's plan, Matthew 1.20. So, if a dream from God might require courage, it will often be accompanied by an internal peace that helps us trust God's purpose. 2. The dream or vision aligns with Scripture. Any message that contradicts God's Word is not from the Holy Spirit. Scripture is the ultimate filter, a light by which we test the authenticity of dreams and visions. 2 Timothy 3.16 reminds us that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. A dream inspired by the Spirit will not lead you to act against biblical principles. Apostle Peter writes in one of his epistles where he compared the visionary experience that he and a few other disciples witnessed of Jesus' transfiguration on the mount. He compared this with scriptures that testified of the lordship of Jesus. He elevated the scriptures above his visionary by calling it a more sure word of prophecy. 2 Peter 1.19 to show how much preference ought to be placed on scriptures. Now imagine if the dream or vision contradicts them. It ought not to be given a second thought at all. In Acts 10, 9-16, Peter experienced a vision of unclean animals and heard the instruction to eat. This vision symbolized that God was now calling him to reach the Gentiles who were once considered unclean. Peter hesitated, but the Spirit confirmed this instruction was from God. This vision didn't contradict Scripture. Rather, it fulfilled God's promise to extend salvation to all. 3. It contains a call to act or change. Often the Holy Spirit speaks in dreams to call us to action, whether to pursue something specific or change our ways. Dreams that involve a call to repentance or a new direction are typical of the Spirit's leading, as He is the one who helps us walk in God's will, John 16:13. In Acts 16, 9-10, Paul has a vision of a man in Macedonia begging him to come and help. This vision was clear in its direction, and Paul responded immediately, setting off on a missionary journey to bring the gospel to new regions. Similarly, if you sense a dream urging you toward a particular purpose or new direction, it might be the Spirit's prompting. The Spirit's messages often require bold steps in faith, leading us to grow and walk closer to God. Fourth, it is confirmed by wise counsel or other revelations. Often, God confirms His messages through additional signs or people in our lives who help us discern His will. Proverbs 11.14 reminds us, Where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Sometimes the Spirit confirms a dream by bringing wise people who can offer insight or interpret its meaning. Other times He may confirm it through repeated signs, other dreams, or scripture. 
I would advise any man that on matters of certain types, dreams or visions, he must always seek counsel from wise spiritual leaders or wait for other dreams or revelations to confirm them. God not only repeated Peter's vision, he confirmed what he was showing Peter by sending Cornelius. God repeated Pharaoh's dreams too. In Genesis 41, Pharaoh's dreams troubled him deeply, but he lacked the interpretation. God sent Joseph, who was gifted in interpreting dreams, to explain the meaning, revealing that Egypt needed to prepare for a coming famine. This counsel saved an entire nation. Similarly, if you feel uncertain, ask God to confirm the message and consider seeking wise counsel from spiritually mature people. 5. The dream bears fruit to an end that is greater than personal gain. When a dream or vision is truly from God, it often carries a purpose beyond personal benefit, directing us towards something much larger, whether a call to serve, a prompting to intercede, or a revelation that blesses others. God-given dreams have a way of bearing lasting spiritual fruit, transforming us and those around us and drawing us closer to God. They often inspire a deeper love for God, foster compassion, or bring clarity and courage for His purposes. These dreams or visions don't just satisfy personal desires, they lead us into alignment with God's kingdom work. Daniel's dreams and visions, particularly those found in Daniel 7, were not just personal revelations. They held significance for entire nations and empires, offering wisdom to kings and insight into God's overarching plan. His interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dreams revealed God's sovereignty and brought respect for God among the Babylonians, even influencing national policy. These dreams led Daniel and those he served to a deeper understanding of God's power and brought glory to God across the region. Likewise, when a dream prompts us to act in ways that benefit others, encourage faith, or bring peace, it is often a sign of the Holy Spirit's involvement. Whether it's an encouragement to pray for someone, offer guidance, or provide comfort, dreams that bear godly fruit are consistent with the Spirit's work, as described in Galatians 5.22 through 23, which includes love, peace, patience, and kindness. Through these dreams, God's will is accomplished in ways that go beyond our own lives, leaving an impact on the world around us and reflecting His nature. 6. The Holy Spirit's presence is tangible. In some cases, Dreams from the Spirit are unmistakable because His presence is profoundly felt within them, bringing a sense of reverence or even awe. As Jesus said in John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, He shall teach you all things. His presence is unmistakably comforting and reassuring, leading you deeper into trust in God. John's vision on the island of Patmos was filled with powerful imagery and profound messages from Jesus about the future, Revelation 1. This encounter was not only meaningful, but also filled with awe, as John was overwhelmed by the holiness of Jesus standing before him. In a similar way, when a dream or vision from the Spirit brings a sense of holy awe, it's a powerful sign that God is communicating. Conclusion. Remember, not every dream or vision is from God, so it's important to test the spirits as 1 John 4, 1 instructs, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Seeking God in prayer and allowing His Spirit to bring clarity will help ensure that we are discerning His true voice amid all others. As you listen and seek God's guidance, remember that the Holy Spirit longs to communicate with us, guiding us into all truth and drawing us closer to Jesus. So keep your heart open, ready to receive His wisdom and willing to obey. Let's be mindful of His signs, knowing He is faithful to lead us, whether in the quiet of our hearts or through the mysteries of dreams and visions.